How's it going everybody? My name is Chris, aka Sparta Chris, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today I am going to talk about the biggest issue I've been facing over the last year and a half that I have been doing this channel, which is my eating habits. And this is something I have talked about in so many videos, and I have brainstormed, and I have planned, and I have not put the plans into action. I haven't listened to my own advice. And I identified in one of my very first videos I ever made, I binge eat because I'm chasing a feeling. I'm not necessarily chasing a food. It's that feeling of being full and some of the those endorphins that get released with it, which are similar to the kind of endorphins that might get released when you're taking a drug. There's actually been a lot of studies about that. I know that this has been the case for me for a very long time. I'm talking probably a decade or more, I have struggled with my eating habits. So why haven't I changed? Well, honestly, it's been hard. And, and, and to be honest, I tend to set myself up for limited successes, which allow for backsliding back into the problems I started with in the first place, because I haven't had a, a plan. I haven't had a crisp proof plan. Real quick, I'm going to talk about the, the issues that I've noticed in the last several months that I've been thinking about this and not putting it in the practice, um, I have a, I identified my trigger foods. I've identified the problems that give me excuses to why I, I get those trigger foods and things like that. And then some things about myself that I think are actually going to be helpful. And then my plan moving forward. So is this plan going to work? Fuck if I know. But I'm going to give it a shot. If you guys are in the same boat as me, which I feel like a lot of people probably are, where you might say, oh, well, you know what? I can eat whatever I want, but as long as I exercise really hard, that'll negate these bad things I'm eating, which is, I, I know it doesn't work, but it has been like that, that subconscious thought of mine for a really long time. I work my body super hard, and then I can eat whatever I want. No, no, I, I have to do this. I have to put better things in my body if I want to get better things out of my body. And I'm not talking about poop. Get enough of that already. So my trigger foods are the typical junk food that everyone would probably list. Things like pizza, hot wings, burgers and fries, uh, chips on the alcohol side too is beer and whiskey. Whiskey I've cut down. Beer I actually cut down for, for quite a while. Uh, I actually went <laughs> for the first time ever, I went like uh, six weeks at one point and had maybe one one or two drinks when I was doing um, my first CrossFit boot camp, which was great. So the more I exercise, I found the less I drink because the drinking really screws up my workout and I don't want to be going into CrossFit or the gym feeling sick or, or not being able to push myself the way I want to. Other problems that have contributed to me uh, not reinforcing the changes I want to make is time. That is the biggest thing. Time is the biggest problem and factor for me because my days are busy. And I know everybody says that and that doesn't make it untrue. It just means as a society, as a culture, yeah, we, we embrace busyness and we keep busy. I work 40 hours a week at a regular job, sometimes more than that because I am salary and sometimes that is just required for me to, um, to do. I also probably put in another 20 or more hours of doing stuff, uh, for the Nerd Sloth Network or doing other things. Um, so that is a lot of time. Rochelle and I are, are, are planning a wedding and on top of that, working out. So there's just, there's so much going on that, that there are some days that I find myself with the only downtime I'm going to have is, is sitting down to eat my dinner and then right before I go to bed. So time is a big thing for me. So I need things to be fast. What sucks about that is there are so many opportunities now for food delivery services like DoorDash and Food Dudes are the ones that we frequent the most. Um, and, and all I have to do is get on my phone, put in the order. It's going to come to me. So in the meantime, I can do all my things and I don't have to worry about making the food. So that's another big thing I got to stop. Yeah. So onto the positive side of some things that I have noticed over the last several months of not putting this into place, but paying more attention to the kinds of foods I like, that I crave, all that good stuff that give me energy. So foods that I crave that aren't necessarily bad, meat. I crave meat all the time. I am a 100% carnivore when it comes to that stuff. So, okay, there is, there's uh, the pillar 
that can build everything else around is I crave meat, so let's work with that. I crave protein, let's work with that. That also means eggs. I crave eggs a lot. In the morning, that is the thing I want the most is eggs. So now I got to think about, okay, well, how do I prepare those eggs? Because that could have a factor on um, my well-being as well. Brussels sprouts, as weird as that sounds, I crave Brussels roasted Brussels sprouts all the time. That's a plus. That's a plus. There's a veggie that I crave. Okay, I can work with that too. And I crave spicy food, which is... Could be bad, could be good. Here's the thing is uh, spice could be really good for you in, in certain ways. It can be good for your metabolism, things like that. And yes, it can make bland foods taste better so that you eat more like vegetables or something like that. What hurts is when you use too much <laughs> and then you, your, your tummy is just not on its A game um, certain days and you're getting bloated and, and you're not having fun trips to the restroom, which I frequent sometimes so moderation for that one that was probably tmi sorry not sorry i think it's kind of funny so here is the plan i'm going to take that idea of i am constantly craving protein and i'm gonna i'm gonna use that so protein as the basis for what i do protein is also the the macronutrient that fills you up the most good that might keep me from from overeating as long as I'm smart about it. So one thing I can do to solve that is I can, you know, do a crock pot meat um, once or twice a week and just let it go through the day. So I'm not over an oven, like making this stuff. No, I'll, all I have to do is dump everything in the crock pot, um, use a crock pot bag for really easy cleanup. I don't have to scrub or anything like that. I can literally just lift the bag out when I'm done. Um, and there I have a meat that that's ready. I can put stuff um, in, in the fridge. I can put some of it in the freezer so that it keeps the rest of the week. Boom, done. Frozen vegetables, easy. Um, especially, I love the, the steamer bags. There we go. I have my meat already ready. And I have my veggies. All I have to do is put them in the microwave, heat them up. Boom. Mornings are a little bit tricky for me because I'm not always that hungry in the mornings. But I do crave eggs. And I, I'm i sorry. I don't like boiled eggs. They smell like buttholes. And, and I don't want to be eating that. I know I'm a millennial, but... So something like poached eggs isn't hard to do, making scrambled eggs or eggs over easy really quick. And then also some kind of fruit in the morning would be good because I usually don't eat any fruit, almost at all. So having some grapes, which are, well, that's easy. You just grab those and, you know, you don't have to really do anything except for wash them off. And then I also really like melons. So that's a, an opportunity too. That comes with some work. So making sure that, you know, once or twice a week, I go out and buy some pre-cut melon. I can take a caveat and... Um, sacrifice a little bit of money because it does um, cost more to have pre-cut stuff, but it's going to give me time back and that's what I need. Pre-packaged nuts for something crunchy to have, as well as um, I, I do kind bars sometimes, especially as a pre-workout snack. We also have a Freshly subscription going on right now. Freshly is kind of a godsend because it is a meal delivery kit that I don't have to actually cook. It's already pre-prepared. The servings actually feel like you're getting the amount of food you need for a full meal. And also it's not frozen and tastes way better. So that's helpful too. We do six meals so Rochelle and I can get three out of those each. That's going to cut down on some of our time in the week also. So how is that going to help binge eating? Like I said, I'm building my diet plan around the thing that's going to fill me up the most, which is also coincidentally the thing I crave the most. It's, it's protein. So I'm helping that making this transition and making it easy and making it fast to do all these things. I'm hoping that that's going to have an impact and I'll be able to report back maybe in a few weeks or a month or something like that on, on how that's going. Another big thing as you saw at the beginning of the video, is drinking lots of water. So having a goal amount of water to drink each day is going to be super helpful. Um, one, because it will help me keep full, especially in between meals. And two, you just need to be hydrated. And, and I don't think almost anybody probably drinks enough water, um, especially if you work out, you need more and more. And if you have you know a glass of alcohol that day, 
you need more. You just need to keep drinking water. Um, this is a good 32 ounces. Um, I'm almost done with this one, and uh, this has been my second one of the day, and right now it's about um, a little after noon. So, um, so I'm doing pretty good for the day. I'll probably have one more of these before I end up at CrossFit later today. And then there's a few things that I need to be careful of, too, with this. And one of those things is I need to avoid bread as much as I can. Now, I'm not going to say no breads, no pastas, things like that, because some of those uh, will give you some complex carbs that, that are good for you. And, and frankly, trying to cut something 100% out doesn't always work, especially for me. Some people can do it, and some people it works for, but everybody is different. And I have not had a lot of success with that stuff. But bread is not something that I crave, and I have learned the, the more bread and stuff I eat, the worse I feel in the day. Um, I have less energy. The other thing that I want to be careful with is dairy. So dairy in moderation, um, along with spice. I already said spice moderation, but dairy in moderation because dairy does make me feel kind of bloated. Um, I don't like that feeling. And also dairy has a lot of fats to it, which of course, um, you know, meat can easily also. But I feel like it's easier to mitigate the amount of fat you would get um, with protein and getting a meat because you can get lean meats and stuff like that. Things like cottage cheese, stuff like that, I'll do that as a snack because I really do like cottage cheese, especially with a few red pepper flakes or black pepper or something on it. But I'm going to avoid putting unnecessary dairy into the meal. So like I don't need to add cheese to whatever meat I'm having. You know, it's it's things like that. It's the the unnecessary stuff. It's like, yeah, does it taste good? Yes, but there's other things I can choose instead of putting cheese on something. So that's the plan. I feel like I talked a lot more than I meant to. So hopefully I got really good at editing this video. I guess you're kind of finding out right now as I'm saying this and I have no idea. I'm just rambling right now. I'm just rambling. Let's just nah. So thank you again. I say that a lot, but I really mean it. And I'll see you next time. Keep fighting.